You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may May allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Defending liberty one hour at a time and broadcasting live from the RWB Network Studios in New York City, this is the Rhino Report. Always right. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. We are going to raise taxes on the middle class. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. You are very rude. We are going to make America great again. USA! 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 It's our America. Let's roll. 
And now, here's your host, the Rhino. The new champ now. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Rhino, and this is my report. Today, Tuesday, January 10th, 2017. And we are coming to you from the RWB Network Studios here in New York and distributed by CRN Digital Talk Radio. Let me set the stage for you, okay? It's a Saturday. You're at home, and it starts snowing. You make some hot chocolate, you watch a movie, and every once in a while, you peek out the window to see how much it's piling up. Without fail, somebody always says, oh, it looks so pretty, right? Sounds nice. Okay, now, let's fast forward about two days. That once pretty, pristine, fluffy, white snow is now 50 shades of brown. Now imagine if the snow fell from the sky, that same dingy color. If you're still with me and you can imagine all of that, then you'll have a pretty good idea of what the snow in Beijing looks like, with an air quality index of almost 200 times higher than what is deemed acceptable by the World Health Organization. The Weather Bureau in Beijing is advising its residents to use an umbrella when it snows because... The snow is dirty. The snow is dirty. (laughs) You thought we had a pollution problem. All right, let's get to today's headlines. First, when you throw a punch at a mixed martial artist, there's a good chance they're going to throw one back at you. UFC athletes, personalities, and supporters wasted no time throwing haymakers at Hollywood elitist Meryl Streep for her criticism of their beloved sport. Also, confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill kicked off today. First up... Donald Trump's pick for U.S. Attorney General, Senator Jeff Sessions. As expected, Senator Sessions handled himself with class. As expected, the Democrats did not. And Julian Assange is now warning us that the Obama administration is actively deleting public records before the big big boys take over on January 20th. WikiLeaks even offering a $30,000 reward to whistleblowers in the administration. All that, plus some of these Obama loyalists might want to take Assange up on his offer. We'll tell you why. One California representative stands up for cops while under attack by the Congressional Black Caucus, and Senator Chuck Schumer goes on CNN once again, acting like his party has won something. You won't believe what he actually said in public without the aid of alcohol. But first, let's kick this show off the same way we always do. The salutes our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you guys got to check out rhinoreport.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Check out how to listen and check out the new articles there. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at... Rhino, R-Y-N-O, on air. We're also on Gab, same handle, and Facebook, facebook.com slash the Rhino Report. And as always, you can email me, rhino, at rwbnetwork.com. Do not go anywhere. Blood pressure tends to run higher during the day and lower during nighttime sleep. However, many people with high blood pressure don't exhibit this nighttime dip, a condition called non-dipping. More in today's AARP health tip after this. Are you paying too much for your Medicare Part D prescriptions? At Walgreens, that's a question you won't have to ask. As a preferred pharmacy with many of the nation's top plans, Walgreens offers co-pays now as low as $0 on select plans. Millions of people have Walgreens as a preferred pharmacy in their network, which means you could be saving big. So switch your prescriptions and start saving today. Walgreens at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Applies to Tier 1 generics. Non-dipping is a major risk factor for stroke, heart attack, and kidney disease. But studies show taking one or more of your prescribed blood pressure medications just before bedtime significantly decreases the risk. Of course, never change the timing of your medications without first consulting your doctor. For more, go to aarp.org. Welcome back to this Tuesday edition of the Rhino Report. Big shout outs, as always, everyone listening right now live Red Nation Rising Radio, the Liberty Feed, StreamingTalkRadio.com, and KLRNRadio.com. The replay midnight Tuesday through Saturday. That's midnight Eastern. And everyone on CRNTalk.com, CRN Channel 1. And you can download that CRN app from your 
Google Play or iTunes Store. Good way to take us on the go. So, did you guys watch the football game last night? You know, I wasn't really that into it. See, I'm a Syracuse fan. I know. You can stop laughing now. But when it comes to college football, there's a lot of... I like football. Let me just put it out there. I do like football. College football, I like it better than the NFL. I won't even watch the NFL really anymore after Colin Kaepernick and that whole charade. This was a pretty good game, though, last night. And it came down, see, a lot of times with football, you can just tune in the third and fourth quarter, and you didn't really miss much. Not much happens the first and second quarter. And this came down to the last second, really, right? It was that touchdown pass to the, the tight end or whatever it was in the last in the last second there. There was a pick thrown. I'll give you Alabama fans that there was a pick in the end zone there that the refs did not call. You know, and then it ends, right? So they do an onside kick, and it ends the last second. You got to let these guys celebrate. That stadium was ready to pop off. They wanted to celebrate like it was 1999 or like it was January 20th, 2017. They wanted to celebrate. And the refs got to stop things. And it's a second left. It's two seconds left. We got to check this. We got to check that. Celebrate. Don't celebrate. Celebrate again. Okay, sort of celebrate, but maybe don't celebrate. That is the problem with football. It's too arbitrary when it comes to the time. It's like why we don't watch soccer. Forget the fact that soccer has scores like 1-0. And we don't use the word nil. It's a dumb word. It's the time. This is how referees in soccer get killed in South America because it goes into overtime and all of a sudden the ref goes up. Oh, look at that. Time's up. Nobody knows. The TV sort of estimates how much time is left with the injury timeouts and I don't know, hot chocolate breaks, whatever they do in soccer. They sort of estimate it. But that's why it's so hard to watch. Could you imagine you're watching game seven of the Stanley Cup playoffs? Okay, let's just say, for argument's sake, it's the New York Islanders versus, I don't know, San Jose. And it's the third period. And the Islanders are up two to one with a minute and 45 left to go on the clock in the third period. San Jose pulls their goalie and the skaters just they just get off the ice. That's it. Game over. How anticlimactic is that? I mean, in baseball, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, you're up to bat. It's what every kid dreams of is winning the game, that walk-off or scoring that shootout goal. Not like, oh, let's end the game, I don't know, a minute and a half early. I don't know, 40 seconds early. Oh, it's terrible. That is the worst part of football. And I'm not like Meryl Streep. I could watch football seven days a week. Don't threaten me with a good time. I could do it, but you got to change that somehow. People complain in baseball about the pitcher takes too long in between pitches, but at least there's some finality to the game. You know, when the third out in the third in or in the ninth inning happens, the game's over. That's it. Then you can, you know, run out of the dugout and go do what you're doing. But in football, it, it, I know it's clock management. I get all that. It's just let these kids celebrate. Some of these kids can't even spell their own names. They want to celebrate a national championship. Let them do that. But they got to stop it and check this and check that. They celebrated four freaking times. Finally, it was like, oh, yeah, okay, we won. We won. Ah, congratulations to Clemson, you know, but it's the problem with soccer, too. Is you just can't. You don't know when the game's over. You have no idea. Well, there are two halves and then some overtime, and everyone takes a break, a little siesta, gets to back playing again. I don't know what the hell's going on. All right. Speaking of people that don't know what the hell's going on, <laughs> I mentioned her already, Meryl Streep. This one, the best thing she could have done was put duct tape over her mouth. She says, oh, if we get rid of all of the, the ethnic people or the foreigners, we'd be left with mixed martial arts and football. Whoa. The horror. The absolute horror. So she wins the Cecil B. DeMille Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes. She pops off about football and uh, mixed martial artists. 
And then she says, Hollywood has to stand up for the principled press. If you ever come across principled press, please let me know. Send me an email that they're out there because I'm pretty sure they're not. So it didn't take long for not only Twitter and Facebook and, you know, everyone with half a brain to get on her case about this, but also you had people from the mixed martial artist world, people who dedicate their lives. It's called martial arts. It's right in the name. She thinks it's not art, but it's right there in the name. She, she came across that football and MMA was some sort of lowbrow form of entertainment. And I'll take that stuff any day. Any day, we're watching someone fake cry for no reason in one of these stupid movies. UFC host Megan O'Leary wrote, Really weird to see someone talk about not discriminating than basically discriminate against an entire group of skilled, hardworking people. Yeah, I couldn't agree. And you have champions. UFC champions. Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor, Amanda Nunez. None of them are from America. So can they stay because MMA is lowbrow? Then can they stay? You had a promoter, Scott, uh, Scott Coker. He wrote an open letter to Meryl Streep. I'm a lifelong fan of your work, but also a lifelong martial artist who happens to promote mixed martial arts around the world. The global sport of mixed martial arts celebrates males and female athletes from around the world who work years tirelessly honing their craft and, yes, art. They come from every country and every walk of life. They don't get that. Lowbrow. Lowbrow. It's for people like me and you. They don't partake. Uh, even, I think, Dana White, right, the head of the UFC, he came out and said some stuff about Meryl Streep. You just... When do these people learn? They just don't learn. Their, their inability to learn is what tells us that they have a low IQ. Because that's what IQ is. It's your ability to absorb information. And when you have 65 million people telling you they want you to shut the heck up and you don't, you're not learning. Not learning. And there were some people who weren't even that happy with her, who were present at the award ceremony at Mel Gibson. There's a funny picture, Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn. Now, I had no idea Vince Vaughn was a libertarian. He is, which means now I like him even more. But Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson, this picture, they're looking at each other kind of sideways, like, what the heck is she talking about? Just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> Very funny, though. If you haven't seen that, it's all over Twitter. I guess libertarian is sort of the more socially acceptable term in Hollywood. Is that kind of like what Jen Paul Mary would call a Catholic? Is that what that is? Either way, he's not a he's not a liberal. So I guess Vince Vaughn, good actor. He's all right. His stuff's pretty funny. He doesn't take himself too seriously though. Meryl Streep, way too seriously. I don't know why. She's terrible. Absolutely terrible. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about what Hillary's cabinet would have been since we're going through confirmation hearings now. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling party savings. Book your wedding event or reception, your birthday bash, or a special event of any kind and celebrate at Angelo's and Vinci's. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our many festive banquet rooms. It's an incredible fun event you'll never forget. Food, music, and lots of fun. Call for the details and don't forget our daily lunch and dinners, plus our Sunday champagne brunch, just $14.95. Minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, plus so much more a chocolate fondue fountain zeppelis cannolis fresh fruit champagne and junior will be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar angelo's and vinci's has been voted on the orange county hot list as one of the top five italian restaurants for the past six years and don't forget our award-winning pizzas thin or thick they're yummy it's all at angelo's and vinci's restaurante at 550 north harbor boulevard in fullerton california call 714-879-4022 714-879-4022 this is Larry Minetti for Herpanison, the acne medication that really works from the inside out. 
If you suffer from skin problems, Herpanacin is the most unique and effective formula on the market. It cleans your skin from the inside out and gets rid of all kinds of acne and blemishes on your back, neck, and your face. It works so well, you can look and feel like a movie star. Herpanacin, a natural supplement created by Dr. Wayne Diamond. You take a pill, and that's it. I've been on these supplements, and they really work, folks. Don't be afraid to look in the mirror ever again. Get Herpanacin today. Call 888-467-4200. That's 888-467-4200. Herpanacin, it really works. 888-467-4200. Tell them Larry Manetti told you to call and look and feel like a million bucks with Herpanacin. Call 888-467-4200. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. All right, guys, welcome back to this Tuesday edition of the Rhino Report. Check out all the old episodes, not all about sports, only a few of them. <laughs> iTunes, tune in, Spreaker, Stitcher, Pod, Be I Heart Radio. But let's just imagine it's Game 7 of the World Series. Your team is down by one, bottom of the ninth, two outs, Ducks on the pond, your best hitter at the plate. The pitcher gets set to deliver the 3 2 pitch. And but he takes a knee. Game over. How stupid is that? So dumb. All right. Speaking of dumb, Hillary Clinton's cabinet. This is pretty funny. This is uh, Mike Allen. He's a former political writer. He's uh, He published what he called the ghost cabinet. And this is on Axios. It's a new media company. That's what happens when you have a writer at one of these places. And I'm not going to name names. I mean, you guys know who most of them are. And they don't like the deal they're getting with their current publication because they're not getting enough you know, nickels per hit or whatever they get. They start their own company. So he publishes uh, uh, what he thinks is the insider look. He has some sources of what Hillary Clinton's cabinet would have looked like. And I think it's important that we talk about this. Since we are at the beginning now of these confirmation hearings, and we'll get into Senator Jeff Sessions today. Uh, but okay, so um, who do you think the Secretary of State would have been? You know what? I'm going to hold off on that one because that's a biggie. Attorney General, he would, uh, she would have kept as L- Loretta Lynch, go figure. Treasury Department, Mr. Allen is saying it would have been uh, Cheryl Sandberg, who's the Facebook uh, Chief Operating Officer. Labor Department would have been Howard Schultz. That may sound familiar to you. He's the one who took Merry Christmas off of the Starbucks cups. He's the Starbucks CEO. Health and Human Services would have been uh, Neera Tandon. She's the uh, she's with the Center for American Progress. She's their executive director. So already, this is a real winning, real winning staff here. Um, there's just there's so much corruption here. It's even hard to put it into words. Brian Fallon would have stayed on as the press secretary. Uma Abedin, she would not have been in charge of the Twitter accounts. Uh, She would have been the deputy chief of staff, sort of what she did with the State Department. Uh, Ron Klain, all right, he would have been the chief of staff to Queen Hillary Clinton. Uh, This is according, of course, to Mike Allen. With Axios, uh, he was Obama's Ebola czar. Remember, we had the Ebola thing, and we had a czar. All of a sudden, they promote they have these czars when they want to just handle something and and avoid all sorts of regulation. They have czars. 
So he would have been that guy. He would have been the chief of staff. Uh, Robbie Mook, who's a total dope, he would have been a senior advisor. But absent from the list, according to Mike Allen, is Cheryl Mills. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Heather Samuelson, another lawyer, uh, she would have had one of the legal jobs in the Clinton White House. Of course, she was the one who went through all of uh, Hillary Clinton's emails before they gave them to the State Department. So real, real good one there. Class act. Uh, Jen Palmieri would have had a first right of refusal, they're saying. And she could have gotten whatever job she wanted in the West Wing. I don't think it would be uh, the uh, liaison to Catholic relations. But she would have had something there. Jake Sullivan. <laughs> Jake Sullivan. This guy would have been the national security advisor. Are you kidding me? This guy, half of the emails that were classified had his name on them that they found. All right, so Secretary of State, this one, John Podesta. John Podesta, Secretary of State. <laughs> uh, we, we really, guys, we really dodged the bullet. I'm telling you, big time, big time. This is, this is half funny. I mean, these people are so corrupt. Could you imagine... We wouldn't have a country. Five years from now, there'd be no country left. We'd be 10 different countries. Texas would have said, forget it, we're out of here. Who knows who else would have fouled along. Ugh. So, we really, <laughs> we, we saved ourselves in November. That's for darn sure. All right, let's turn our attention to the actual cabinet picks. Senator Jeff Sessions, he's there today in front of the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee. This thing, it's a lot of pomp and circumstance. It's a lot of towing party lines. It was a circus. The thing's a circus. It's going to be a two-day circus. Code Pink was there. They're everywhere. The KKK costumes were out. Why would you let somebody in to one of these hearings while they're wearing a KKK costume? Are we not checking their bags before they, they... I mean, if you're the guy checking the bags, you go, Hey, what's this for? Why'd you bring your bed sheets with you? And you don't let them in. And Code Pink had those little pink tiara things they were wearing. If you see this stuff, why do you... You know they're going to be a problem. I was just hoping that the police officers in that room started tasing people. Next person to stand up gets tased. This thing took way longer. There were so many interruptions during it. But we will talk about what was said and what's coming up for the next group of people to be interviewed before their confirmations. All right, guys, hang in there. You're listening to The Rhino Report. Come to Angela's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling party savings. Book your wedding event or reception, your birthday bash, or a special event of any kind and celebrate at Angelo's and Vinci's. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our many festive banquet rooms. It's an incredible fun event you'll never forget. Food, music, and lots of fun. Call for the details and don't forget our daily lunch and dinners, plus our Sunday champagne brunch, just $14.95. Minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, Plus so much more, a chocolate fondue fountain, Zeppelis, cannolis, fresh fruit, champagne, and Junior will be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar. Angelo's and Vinci's has been voted on the Orange County Hot List as one of the top five Italian restaurants for the past six years. And don't forget our award-winning pizzas. Thin or thick, they're yummy. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714-879-4022. 714-879-4022. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you have severe knee or back pain and you have Medicare or private insurance, we have great news. Finally, there's a way to reduce your pain without surgery or taking medications. Call us today and learn how you can qualify to get a pain-relieving knee or back brace at little or no cost to you. We'll even ship your brace for free. If you have excruciating knee or back pain and you have Medicare or private insurance, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving, nearly invisible knee or back brace at little or no cost to you. I've used one. They're comfortable and they work and we guarantee your happiness. So call right now and get yours. I promise we're here to take your call. Thank you. 800-290-0759. 800-290-0759. That's 800-290-0759. 
What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live and help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. All right, guys, welcome back to the Tuesday edition of the Rhino Report. Follow me on the Twitter at Rhino R Y N O on air. We're on Gab too, speaking freely right there. Same handle at Rhino on air. So we got the confirmation hearings. They're underway. This thing is a circus. It's a three ring circus. You have Code Pink. They're there with their foam tiara things or princess crowns, whatever the heck it is they wear. Uh, the KKK costumes are out there. They were chanting that that no Trump, no KK, no racist USA, whatever they were chanting. You know, the, the loudest voices that claim their actions are in the name of the First Amendment are always the last ones to listen. They just don't want to listen. Now, I, you know, I'm not real big on some of these confirmation hearings. I watched it. To me, it was a combination of Ambien and Geritol. It was it was tough to watch, tough not to fall asleep. Essentially, what happens here? is you get peppered with questions. Question, 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 question. And the best answer you can give is, I don't make the laws, if you're the AG, of course, if this is, you know, for Jeff Sessions. I don't make the law. I'm just going to enforce it as it's written by you, the legislators. And that's the best answer. They're going to ask them all about this stuff from the 1980s, and he's racist, and he just said, listen, none of that's true. Let's talk about enforcing laws. He handled himself very well. He was very classy. I think he did a good job. The main the, the, the main part of this whole process for the opposing party, so in this case the Democrats, what their goal is, is to spill a lot of blood. It's just about besmirching somebody on the record. That's all it is. They can't do anything about it. You're not going to get... 9 or 10 or 11 Republicans to, to not vote for him. Signed, sealed, delivered. It's over. On to the next one. It's going to be a two-day process, and it's just to get stuff on the record. It's kind of like that, that, that ethics committee. Sort of the same thing. People always go there six months before an election to put stuff on record about somebody else so that it can be used in a campaign against somebody. I know. We shouldn't get rid of ethics stuff in Washington. Bad optics, I understand that. But they don't use it for the right reasons. It's used just to put stuff on record. Wild conspiracy theories. So, I thought Sessions did a good job. I I thought he did about as well as he was going to. Lindsey Graham showed up. He he has a question about... Uh, online poker. Well, who cares? 
Who, are you really serious? We're firing warning shots that I read, and we have ISIS pledging to kill all of us in the name of Allah, and you're going to ask about online poker? This guy's head's in the sand. Totally in the sand. And we already know him, McCain, probably Rubio, they're not going to vote for the Tillerson Rex. We know that. Not going to do it. I think he starts tomorrow, right? I think is when his confirmation hearing starts. But I thought Sessions did well. You know, he's going to face some opposition when it comes to surveillance and civil rights and uh, legalizing marijuana. Of course, that's going to be a hot button because marijuana is legal for recreational use, I think, in eight states. Is it eight? I think it's eight. Uh, plus Washington, D.C., go figure. But it is banned by federal law. So he can step in and he can, you know, he can do what he wants to do there. Is that high on the list? Probably not. The, the one person who sort of got me a little annoyed was this Feinstein. Diane Feinstein out of California. You guys, man, you're stuck with a couple of real winners out there. Between this Garcetti guy in L.A., you got Feinstein, you got uh, Pelosi. I mean, just a, a real set of winners up there. If there was ever going to be a Mount Rushmore, you were going to carve faces in and then blow it up, it would be them. It would be all the people out of California who represent you. Um, she's asking, I mean, almost asking uh, or acting like Hillary Clinton's attorney, asking, you know, you know, uh, your job, Mr. Sessions, will not include the prosecution of former Secretary of State and um, uh, that you can't, you can't prosecute at the direction of the president. And he goes, yeah, I know. And he said he would recuse himself. He said it about 17 times. And she kept drilling it in. Of course, this goes back to when Donald Trump had said he would appoint a special prosecutor to look into it. And I think he should. I really do. I think there were a few things that, that tipped the scales for a lot of people. One of them was the hashtag lock her up. The other one was hashtag build a wall. And the other one was hashtag drain the swamp. Those were three things that fired up a lot of people who got people out to vote. They were tired of corruption. They were tired of illegal mass immigration. They were tired of everything that goes on in Washington day after day, same old, same old. So I, I, I think you can't let that go. And I know it was one of the first things Trump said he was going to say, well, you know, they're not bad people. The Clintons, yes, they are. They're bad people. They are bad people. And I, I know you don't want to say that. You just got elected and you want to bring the country together, but they're not coming together. There's a certain contingent out there that are just not ever going to wish you well or hope for success or want to come together. So Sessions said he would recuse himself. You know, she's lecturing Feinstein. She's lecturing Sessions about the Constitution and how, uh, you know, that, that comes first and foremost. Meanwhile, she's the one that has put up legislation to get rid of the Electoral College. How's that for respecting the Constitution? These people, I'm telling you, it's like, it's two sides against the middle whenever they open up their mouths. Every, they contradict themselves at every single turn, and no one holds them accountable, which is why Drain the Swamp became so popular, because finally somebody was going to hold them accountable. She's going to lecture about the Constitution and respecting it, and then, oh, well, we have to amend it because it doesn't fit our narrative. That's Diane Feinstein. Ask her how her husband's doing with that billion-dollar train contract he has, right? No experience in railroad work. He's going to build a billion-dollar super train or something. wonder how that got pushed through. Another one of these winners, Chuck Schumer. This guy was on uh, CNN with Dana Bash. <laughs> Never go on CNN, especially with her, but... Pretty much what he says in this interview is that he's not planning on working with Donald Trump unless Donald Trump completely abandons his Republican colleagues. This guy, Chuck Schumer, he's talking like he won something. Like they have, uh, they have any stake here. Listen, you guys have gotten shellacked 1,300 electoral seats in eight years. You haven't won anything. This guy couldn't win a Carnival Midway game at this point. I'll go over this interview when we come back. It's pretty funny. I mean, because he actually believes the words that are coming out of his mouth. Yeah, just putting on a show. That's all they're doing. They're putting on a show. But, to be fair, maybe it wasn't Christian that made a comeback in November. Maybe it was populism, but it wasn't humor.
Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right, for you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right, in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help you can always get fast help and fast answers so on your next trip maybe today maybe tomorrow how about right now pick up your phone and call smart fares plus save up to 75 percent in your plane reservation so call right now 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 all right, guys, welcome back to the show. So, Chucky e. Schumer, Senate Minority Leader, newly, right? New. Took over there for Harry the Millionaire Reed. He's on, he's on CNN talking to Dana Bash, and he says, I said, President-elect, you went after both Democrat and Republican establishments when you ran. You were an anti-establishment change candidate. By your cabinet picks and your early pronouncements, you seem to be embracing your time-worn, shop-worn, hard right. And Dana Bash says, you said that to him? Schumer says, I did. (laughs) Well, what did he say? And Schumer says, nothing. (laughs) Nothing? Yeah, okay. I'm sure Trump was speechless when you said that. Schumer goes on in the interview. He says, the only way we're going to work with him is if he moves completely in our direction and abandons his Republican colleagues. So what he's saying is he abandons the will of the American people. 90, 95 percent of the time we'll be holding his feet to the fire and holding him accountable. But we're Democrats. We're not just going to oppose to oppose. The interview goes on. Schumer says, well, here's the problem. Republicans in the Senate and the House have been run by hard right groups, an almost Tea Party group. Oh, so the people, the people who voted for him, people they're representative of, he doesn't like you. He doesn't like you. They're so far away from where we are. He's talking with this like indignation, like like they won something. Like we have to bow down to them. They have lost 1,300 seats, electoral seats. On the state and federal level since 2008, they haven't won anything. Trump won the majority in 30 states. He won the way we do things. He played the game the right way. This all goes back to they're leaning on the fact that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. And that goes without the 3 million. You take the 3 million out that were illegally cast, maybe she didn't win, but she did not win the majority. She won the popular vote. She didn't win 150 million votes. So to say she has the majority of support is a misnomer. Like I said before the break, you know, I'm not convinced that conservatism made this big comeback in November. I think it maybe inched forward a little bit. This was a populist move. It was a step in the populist direction, different from conservatism. Some people want to conflate the two. They're not the same. But this definitely was not a step in the progressive liberal liberal left 
direction, and they think it was. They're just putting on a show for these these lefties out in Hollywood and the elitists. That's what they're doing. They can't stop anything. They really can't. They can hold stuff up. They can shut the government down. They can, you know, do the, that sort of stuff. But that didn't play very well for Republicans. So we'll see how much they actually want to get involved. Do they want to work with the American people or work against the American people? That's what the Democrats have to decide now. Uh, speaking of Democrats, Hillary Clinton, she's done. Apparently she's done. You know, there was a lot of talk, and we talked about it here, about her possibly running for New York City mayor. Now, there was this sort of canned speech that was given by a, a near attend, and of course, we said before, the president and CEO of the Center for American Progress. Um, this was, I think it was on CNN. And she said that Hillary Clinton, uh, she's not going to run for mayor. She's going to hang out with her family and help children and help their families. What has she actually helped besides herself? So she's not running. You know, two months from now, they're going to be out of money and she's going to run. That's how this is going to go. They're going to be dead broke again. Remember that? Hillary Clinton, she snatched, what, defeat from the jaws of victory twice now. But uh, maybe she's tired. Maybe she's tired, taking some naps, walking around the woods of Chappaqua. But her people... Her loyalists, the Obama loyalists, they're having a very hard time lately finding work. D.C., now you might want to be sitting down for this, but D.C. is now a Republican area. Yeah. They're having a hard time. This is according to Politico. The Trump tornado is tearing up post-election planning around the Beltway. It's not just those 4,000 administration jobs that are no longer available to Hillary or that failed Senate candidates like Russ Feingold and Katie McGinty won't be able to hire their staff on the Hill. There's also lobbyist firms, trade associations, and corporate government affairs offices that are pitching senior Obama aides' resumes into the round file while scrambling to hire operatives with Republican connections. It's insult to injury for a generation of young operatives who's still managing their shock and grief from Hillary Clinton's loss. And for those who want to help <laughs> help! I can't even say that laughing. Help fight for the president, his legacy from being erased. There aren't a lot of places ready to pay them to do it. They can't find jobs. The Democrats are out of work. So now they get to know what it feels like to be out of work. They can walk in the shoes of the southern Michigan voter, the southern Wisconsin voter, the eastern Ohio voter the Western Pennsylvania voter, they can finally see what it's like. Huh. Isn't that for a bit of irony here? <laughs> oh, boy. It looks like the Obama loyalists, people who have been with Obama for the last eight years, they're heading out to, uh, out to Silicon Valley. That's where they're going. They're finding jobs out there with the help of Google and... Instahoo and snap a what whatever it stuff's called they're finding jobs for them out there but the clinton people they can't find work they're saying because they have a palpable anger still they're frustrated they're anxious and they're burnt out ha, perhaps they shouldn't have popped the champagne too early all right when we come back let's talk a little bit about what's going on with julian assange and a picture that was removed from the halls of congress only to be put back up again. We'll be right back, guys. Hey, guys. Ryan the Rhino DeSico here for my friends at Liberty HealthShare. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, listen up because you do have options. Liberty HealthShare could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here, and this could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty HealthShare. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty HealthShare offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your own doctors and you choose your own hospitals. Liberty HealthShare offers freedom from insurance, meaning there are no related tax penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855 585 4237 or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org that's libertyhealthshare.org 
do it today. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous Big Boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you have severe knee or back pain and you have Medicare or private insurance, we have great news. Finally, there's a way to reduce your pain without surgery or taking medications. Call us today and learn how you can qualify to get a pain-relieving knee or back brace at little or no cost to you. We'll even ship your brace for free. If you have excruciating knee or back pain and you have Medicare or private insurance, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving, nearly invisible knee or back brace at little or no cost to you. I've used one. They're comfortable and they work, and we guarantee your happiness. So call right now and get yours. I promise we're here to take your call. Thank you. 800-290-0759. 800-290-0759. 800-290-0759. That's 800-290-0759. All right, guys, welcome back to this last segment of today's Tuesday edition of the Rhino Report. You know, we can call this karma strikes back. That's what's happening with these staffers, these Obama loyalists, these Clinton loyalists that can't find jobs. They're saying the Clinton people are darn near unemployable. They're angry, they're frustrated, they're, they're anxious, they're burnt out. Boy, we better get them some Play-Doh and hot chocolate. Get them to calm down a little bit. You know, I wonder if you ask these people now um, what they think the unemployment rate is now. Do they still think it's 4.6%? Maybe they think it's more like 20 to 25%. They're hanging out with their buddies. Do you have a job? Nope. Do you have a job? Nope. Do you have a job? Nope. All of a sudden, it's not 4.6 anymore. All of a sudden, the economy isn't so robust as the Obama administration has been telling us. They get to walk a mile in our shoes. And while I'm never happy to see somebody unemployed, I will grin a little bit with this one. Just a little bit. Not that I'll help them find a job, though. But they got Facebook for that. Google. They're all helping them, trying to find jobs everywhere. (laughs) You know, it's sort of an occupational hazard of working in politics is, you know, if you work for someone and they're not reelected, well, <laughs> you're not rehired. That's kind of how that works. All right, let's move on to WikiLeaks. We didn't get into the car stuff today. I wanted to talk about Ford and Chrysler, but we'll do that tomorrow. Let's talk about Julian Assange. He went on Periscope. Now, we do Periscope press conferences now. Um, that's like a Facebook Live thing, but it's not. It's Periscope. Anyway... Uh, He said they're giving a $30,000 reward to any administration, current administration employee who publicly exposes any official disposing of information. Apparently, it's like Enron. It's like the last 20 minutes of Enron over there in D.C. They're shredding stuff and they're deleting stuff. They They probably have Hillary Clinton on a consultant contract with deleting this stuff. She knows all about it. She's really good at it. Yeah, so Assange is offering a reward. You know, yeah. nice little speech here he gives, but I feel like he knows something. You feel like Assange is one of those guys that doesn't speak without having information to speak on. I don't know. Yeah, I have a feeling that he knows Obama was complicit with the emails that that Obama knew Hillary Clinton had an illegal, you know, email address and server and the whole thing. I, he probably knew where Obama was during Benghazi since he wasn't in the Situation Room. 
right? And, and whenever you bring that up to a liberal, that Obama wasn't in the Situation Room during Benghazi, what's the answer to that? They say, oh, well, he killed Osama bin Laden. That's what they say. They completely changed the topic, and he didn't kill anybody. The Navy SEALs, they peppered old bin Laden there, turned him into Swiss cheese. So, I feel like Assange knows something, but... I don't know, the last DNC staffer or Democrat staffer to let information go uh, turned up in a botched robbery, right? So we'll see how that goes. Uh, last little thing here. Did you guys hear about this this painting, I don't know, the Congressional Black Caucus and uh, Lacey Clay out of Missouri? They had this painting depicting cops as pigs shooting at black people. Well, uh, <laughs> that didn't go over too well didn't go over too well so it was taken down by Duncan Hunter he took it right down he, of course he's out of California and now the Democrats want him prosecuted for stealing or theft or whatever he gave it right back to them he said I mean, this can't hang here though but they're saying that it was it's art and it was you know it was part of some art contest so let's have our own contest let's have the best depiction of a house Democrat let's do your art and let's get that posted in the halls of Congress all right, guys, hope you had a good time today. We covered a lot. We'll get to a lot more tomorrow. A big thank you to all those serving our country at home and abroad. And a huge thank you to those in the law enforcement community. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all your hard work. We all depend on you. Please, please, please stay safe. God bless all of you. God bless all of your families. Have a great rest of your day. Check out all the old episodes, rhinoreport.com. But until tomorrow, I'm the Rhino, and I'm out.